Well, good morning, everyone. Hey, if I could have everyone join us from the kitchen, the, the bedroom, the bathroom, come on in. All right, now it's good to see you, or, well, I guess I can't see you, but whatever. You know what I mean. My name is Chad, and I'm glad you're here today to experience a, a worship time uh, with Emmanuel Reformed Church. And i um, just, just glad you're here, glad you're able to participate in, in this way. Now, today is Sunday. May 10th, it's a very special holiday, and that is, it's National Clean Your Room Day. You've probably done that quite a bit over the last few months. But it's also Mother's Day today. So hopefully you're able to, maybe you're able to celebrate Mother's Day live, and but maybe you're not. Maybe you're not because of you can't get connected right now. Or maybe your mother's no longer with us. So just, just have a memory of your mother today, or maybe you're able to talk to someone about your mother, or, or just to write something down about a memory of your mother today. I would encourage you to do that. Not much for announcements today. I guess I would encourage you to continue to check the Facebook page. There's definitely things there all the time, videos and other things that we are sharing, the, the staff is sharing, and it's been kind of great to see. The email, definitely things coming on the email. We are uh, making a little collection for the West Michigan Friendship Center. And so even though we are not able to gather together, that's an opportunity we have to purchase and give back to the community. So definitely check the emails for that information or contact the church and they can give you more information about that. Well, uh, this week I just encourage you, one other thing to do is maybe call someone or connect with somebody you have not connected with yet. Maybe it's a family member, maybe it's someone from a church member or a church family member. Who knows? I, I just want to encourage you to call, connect, text, email, write a letter, to someone maybe you've not reached out to yet or talked to in quite a while and just maybe see how they're doing and encourage them. Well, let's, uh, before we start worship, let's enter our time in, in prayer. Lord, we thank you that we can be together today in, in this way and thank you for the, the power of technology and, and the things that we can do with that, Lord. Lord, we pray for our time today, our, our praise and worship, the gifts that people are bringing forth, the, the message by Pastor Brian, Lord, and we just pray that this experience would be one that's touched by you and just be a, a spiritual experience today. And then we just have this time just, just to rest and, and maybe hear how you may be speaking to us um, through the activities, through the, the singing, through the, the preaching, Lord. Uh, what are you trying to say to us through uh, those who are in the worship service today? Lord, we thank you for our time together. And we just bless this time that uh, it may just may be led by you in your name amen well normally i would say hey greet everyone around you and you may be able to do that and maybe not so i guess if you're over here i'll just greet you over here and if you're on this side i'll just greet you over there otherwise i'll give you a virtual high five so thanks everyone have a great week
Okay. Our children's message today is about protection. Protection. Mom, what is protection? Protection is a person or a thing that keeps someone or something safe. Anna, is there ever a time when you need protection? Wow. sunscreen in the sun so I don't get sunburned. I use an umbrella when it's raining. Both helmets, sunscreen, and umbrellas protect us from hurting our heads from a bad sunburn or getting wet. Anna, is there anyone who protects you? You protect me. Yes, that's right, Anna. I do protect you. I love you, and I protect you, and I don't want you to get hurt. Is there anyone else who protects you? God protects me. That's right, Anna. Do you remember David in the Bible? Yeah. What can you tell me about David? David was a shepherd boy. Yeah, and, and what did David do? He grabbed a slingshot, and nobody else wanted to fight Goliath, the big giant. And then he grabbed a slingshot, and he pulled it, and he hit him right in the head, and he fell down. That's right. So God, David was a shepherd boy, and he trusted God to protect him. Goliath was a big bully, and he was trying to fight the Israelites. Nobody had the courage to fight Goliath. But David trusted in God's protection. David used a slingshot and a small stone. Later, David wrote many songs. We can read them today in the Bible in Psalms. And many times David wrote that God was his shield. Anna, do you have a shield? Yeah. Okay, this is a shield. What, what does a shield do? It protects me. Yeah, so when a soldier went out to fight and the enemy was shooting things at them. The shield would protect the soldier. Mm -hmm. David, he, know, he knew of God's protection from Goliath. And he writes in Psalm 28, verse 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts him and I am helped. See, David knew God's protection, that God would protect him from his enemies. So God is our shield. But the Bible also tells us that God protects us with his wings. Now, this is a picture of a mother bird protecting a baby, her baby birds, like this. The mother bird would take its, her wing and cover, shelter, protect the baby birds from whatever danger there might be. David writes in the psalm that God will cover us with his wings. In Psalm 91 verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers, that is God, and under his wings you will find refuge. Just like the mother bird runs, uh, just like the baby bird runs to the mother bird for safety and protection, we can run to God for safety and protection. All right? God will protect us and we can trust him. Just like David trusted God. And we can trust God to protect us. So when we are afraid, 
or if we are scared, we can run to God for protection. How many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 4. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. I'd like to read for you 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In God's great mercy, he has caused us to be born again into a living hope because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now we hope for the blessings God has for his children. 
These blessings, which cannot be destroyed or be spoiled or lose their beauty, are kept in heaven for you. God's power protects you through your faith until salvation is shown to you at the end of time. Well, hello, my Emmanuel family and friends. Welcome to our online worship service. Today, we're looking at the theme of God is our refuge. The wings of God. What does it mean to be sheltered by God? But first of all, I, I want to say that this coronavirus quarantine has really been hard on our emotions. Um, you might feel like your emotions are about to pop out of your head. Kind of like this picture right here. Can you see those different emotions? Have you felt them at different times? I want to read some statements to you from people in our church. Um, I've been trying to stay connected with people via text message or emails or phone calls. And um, yeah, people are feeling it. And so I, I'm going to read for you some statements of what people have said to me. I'm unsure, anxious, worried, and concerned while trusting God, if that's possible. Another one. I've had a stronghold of stress and intensity as to how I approach life, which has also now had an ill effect on my digestive health. Or another one. I'm just so confused, angry, sad, heartbroken. I am very stuck and angry inside. I'm remaining healthy, but I've suffered some depression. I yelled and I screamed, and then I cried, probably too much. I'm okay, but I'm feeling the loneliness. I'm struggling with the death of a young man that I know. I really am not radiating Jesus lately. I'm crabby and rather rebellious. I know I should be thankful, but I feel complete guilt. A good friend lost her job and I kept mine. And the last one. That led me into a good, big, sobbing cry, which I've needed for a long time. I'm a cry stuffer. The tears come on when I'm going to work, but then I can't cry then. And so I stuff my tears. People are experiencing a variety of emotions. And I call this emotional chaos. And in fact, I did a Google search for emotional chaos, and this painting came up. Kind of a lot of emotions going on there. Just kind of pulling us in a variety of different places. This kind of emotional disruption leads to a lack of peace within us. And it leads to the presence of anxiety. So we're no longer calm inside. We're no longer at peace inside. We're now warring within ourselves with anxiety, anger, angst, sadness, confusion. And then we tend to act out based on these emotions. We snap at someone. Or we have an impatient response for our child. Maybe you withdraw from your spouse. Blame others. Maybe just deny being on edge. You're denying being grumpy when you know inside you are. Emotional chaos. We are feeling emotional disruption. And with all of this emotional disruption going on inside of our hearts, what does God say to us? What does God say to us about who God is? About what God does? Who is God in the midst of this storm? That's what we're going to look at this morning. So who is God? What is his nature like? Well, I'm out here in the woods again. I love the woods. Uh, because we've been, we read from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. In these verses, there's a picture of God like a mother bird. Now, some of you on Facebook, you may have seen this picture right here. People have been posting it with uh, Psalm 91, verse 4. 
a mother bird offers protection, safety, calm, peace for her chicks. The chicks are safe under her wings. This is an image of God's protection over us. He shelters us under his wings. We are at rest with him. We are at peace with him when he covers us with his wings. So we make a choice. We make a choice to dwell in the shelter, to dwell in the refuge of the Almighty. We make a choice to come to him to say, yeah, I, th th there's a storm out there. There's chaos out there. My emotions are going crazy. So I come to you, I dwell. And when we dwell in God's refuge, we receive rest. We receive rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This picture of these birds, this is a picture of God. He shelters you. He's covering you with his feathers. He covers you with his wings to bring you refuge. That's who God is. God's very nature is to protect you, to bring peace to your soul. We also read in Psalm 91 about the fowler's snare. Well, that is a person seeking to capture or attack a bird. The fowler is somebody who wants to catch a bird. And they set a snare to trap the bird. God protects you from that. And also we read about the pestilence. Pestilence, by definition, is a fatal epidemic disease. Fatal epidemic disease. Yeah, that's exactly what we got going on right now with the coronavirus. We have this fatal epidemic disease. It's a pandemic. It's global. Well, we read that God delivers us or he saves us in the same way that a mother bird delivers or saves her chicks. She shelters them under her wings. That's an image of God. You are sheltered under his wings. In the story of Ruth, Ruth is a Moabite woman who marries an Israelite man and he dies. And then her father-in-law dies and her brother-in-law dies. And all she's left with is her mother-in-law, an Israelite, Naomi. And so Ruth makes the choice to leave Moab where there's a famine and no food. She has no husband, no one to provide for her. She makes a choice to leave that land of Moab to go to Israel with her mother-in-law, Naomi. She goes gleaning in a field owned by a man named Boaz. And Boaz meets Ruth and he speaks a blessing on her. In Ruth chapter 2, verse 12, we read this. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Boaz sees that Ruth's choice to be with Naomi and to come to the land of Israel is to come under the wings of the Lord as her God, as her provider, as her protector, as her refuge. Ruth chose the refuge of the Lord. So here again is an image that is used in the Bible of God protecting us, bringing us peace by sheltering us under his wings, like a mother bird shelters her chicks. Jesus uses the same image in Luke chapter 13, verse 34. Jesus speaks these words, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those to, who sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Jesus longs to gather people under his wings of protection and safety and peace. Now the Jews at the time of Jesus chose not to be gathered by Jesus, but we can choose. We can choose to let Jesus gather us under his wings, 
and under his wings we find refuge. When we're under the wings of God, there is peace in the midst of the storm. So trusting Jesus is about coming under his wings, the wings of God. This is a place of refuge, it's a place of protection, it's a place of peace. The wings of God. This is an image of God's nature. He is by nature one who protects, one who shelters, one who gives peace to our soul because we're resting under his wings, just like these chicks rest under her mother's wings. Well, in Psalm 91, verse 4, there's another image. We read that God's faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. These are another image of protection. They are shield, shields to protect us from attack. So we're going to look at that next in just a moment. In Psalm chapter 3, verse 3, we read, But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. You're a shield around me. So this is another image in the Bible of how God protects us, that of a shield. So I did a little bit of research. I know you're surprised. I like to research. I like to look things up. So here I am in the library looking things up. And so I looked up uh, what a medieval shield looked like during the Holy Roman Empire. So here is a picture of one. This one here has a Crusader cross crest emblazoned on the front of the shield. So that means it's from about the 1300s AD. Uh, when a soldier went into a battle carrying a shield, usually the shield had the coat of arms of their king or lord that they're following into the battle. And so here is um, a, a crusader cross. So they would use these shields to protect themselves during hand-to-hand -hand battles. So when a, a, an opponent, an enemy, would be thrusting a spear or a sword, you'd put up the shield to protect your body from that attack. So it's a shield used uh, in battle. Now, if we jump from the 1100s to the 1900s, we um, developed quite a bit in terms of military technology. So here's a picture of the Ordnance 25 pounder artillery cannon. Uh, it was built just before World War II, about 1940, used up until the 70s. In World War II, it was the main field gun that was used during the war. And this one here has protective shields for the gunners. So when an enemy would be firing at them while they're trying to use this field gun, they could be safely protected behind the shield that is on either side of the cannon barrel shields. They offer protection. Well, according to the Bible, we are surrounded by the Lord, who is our shield. He protects us. You, O oh Lord, are a shield around me, not just in front of me, not just beside me, not just behind me, but all around me. So when we're being attacked, it could be in a personal attack, verbal, it could be lies spoken against you, it could be the effects of other people's sin against you. We're protected in those attacks by the Lord. He's a shield around us. There's an evil one. There's an evil one who tempts us and entices us to sin, to trust ourselves instead of trusting God. I want to read a couple of Bible verses from the New Testament. 1 Peter 1 verse 5. We read, who through faith are shielded by God's power. Through faith we're shielded. And then also Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, when Paul writes about the spiritual armor. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. We have an enemy, the evil one. He's sending flaming arrows to get us to sin, to tempt us and entice us. But we also have a shield. The Lord is a shield around us to protect us. 
We are safe behind the shield of Jesus. God's power shields us. You, O Lord, are a shield around me. By faith, we are shielded by God's power. In the New Testament, the shield is connected to faith. Faith is about trusting, trusting Jesus to protect us instead of trusting myself, instead of taking matters into my own hands, I trust Jesus. You see, we cannot fix our own sin issues. We cannot defeat the devil. Jesus defeated the devil and he set us free from the power of sin and the penalty of sin. And so we trust Jesus. We trust Jesus' power to shelter us from the enemy attacks, from the temptations of the evil one, from those flaming arrows. We trust Jesus. He is the shield around us. We are safe when we're with Jesus, when we come under enemy fire, because Jesus is our shield. So when you're feeling attacked, when there's emotional chaos going on inside of you, when somebody says mean-spirited things about you, in that moment, you can pray and come to Jesus. Ask Jesus for his power to protect your heart. Say, Jesus, my, my heart is hurting. Jesus, somebody has wounded me. Jesus, I can't take any more of this sheltering at home. This quarantine is too much. I'm getting angry and antsy. We pray. We bring all these things to Jesus and, and whatever else is going on. And we pray. You see, God's nature, God's nature is about protection, safety, peace. When we're behind the shield of Jesus, we are in a place of safety and peace. The shield. The shield of Jesus. It's a safe place. It's a protected place. But today's shields that we are using in 2020 are quite different from the shields of battle. So we're going to have a look at them for just a moment. Psalm 91 verse 3. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. Pestilence, a fatal epidemic disease. Coronavirus is such a disease. And so we don't need the shield of the soldiers in the Middle Ages, nor the shields with the artillery guns in World War II. But now when you go to stores, you're seeing these glass shields to protect us from the spread of an invisible virus. And we're now wearing face masks so that the COVID-19 virus does not enter our bodies so that nothing can get into us. Some people are even wearing shields over their eyes so that nothing can get into their body. Glass shields and face masks, they offer physical and medical protection against a disease. But what about our soul, our hearts? What about the emotional state going on inside of us? What protects that part of our identity? There's a great line in a song. I will trust my Savior Jesus. Trust him when my strength is small. For I know the shield of Jesus is the safest place of all. For I know the shield of Jesus is the safest place of all. Glass shields, face masks, medieval and artillery shields, they don't protect our souls. They don't bring peace to our hearts when we're feeling emotional chaos. When we're feeling disrupted inside of us and all kinds of things are bubbling around, when uncertainty grips your heart, in those moments, we come behind the shield of Jesus. Allow Jesus to gather you under the wings of God. So when I think of the shield of Jesus, I think of the cross. 
You see, the cross is empty. Yeah, Jesus hung on the cross. He died. But he also rose again for the dead. And by rising again, he defeated the power of sin and death and the evil one. And so Jesus has power, the very power of God Almighty to shield us, shield us from sin and shame, shield us from all those emotional chaos that we're going through. Jesus has that power, and we can come to him for real protection, real refuge. So back at the start of the sermon, I mentioned that a number of people had written to me how they're doing. Well, one of them who had shared some of the emotional frustrations of life also wrote this. So I had a big prayer time with God over that. I now feel much more calm, relaxed, and at peace inside myself. Therefore, dealing with what a week throws at me goes much better and easier. God is good. I had a prayer time. And so when we're in those moments of emotional frustration and angst and chaos, we come to Jesus in prayer. I, I had it just this week. I was at the bank machine making a deposit and the envelope fell out of my hand and it landed underneath the car. We well, can't open the car door <clears throat> because you're so close to the ATM. So what did I do? I yelled at the ATM because that worked. Not really. But it just demonstrated the, the angst and frustration that I was going through. And <clears throat> It was all during this week when I'm preparing this message about coming under the shield of Jesus. And I was feeling it. And so I just devoted a moment then. I said, Jesus, I need you. I need you, Jesus. I need you to be my shield. I need to come under your wings of refuge. Jesus, you long to gather me as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Gather me, Jesus. And in that moment, he did. And it was like I could spiritually feel Jesus put his arm around me, smile at me and say, it's okay. I've got you. The Apostle Paul, he lived through difficulties. And in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, he records what Jesus said to him. And Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. That's Jesus. His power is made perfect in your weakness. His grace is more than enough to deal with whatever's going on in your heart and mind during this quarantine. Jesus, he's got the power. The shield of Jesus. He invites you to come under his shield to protect you. And under the shield of Jesus, there's peace. Peace for your soul. Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, in this world you will have trouble, but in me you have peace. So today I invite you. I invite you to come under the shield of Jesus. And coming under the shield of Jesus is not a one and done thing. It isn't just that day when you're maybe a, a teenager and you decided to become a Christian. That day was important and it was a beautiful day, an awesome day but we have to daily make that choice to come under his shield. And if, if you have not trusted Jesus yet in your life, I invite you to do that right now, to say, Jesus, I need you. I can't handle this. I've tried handling life on my own, but I need you today. And you can come under his shield. And if, if you've already been trusting Jesus for a while, but you're still going through this emotional chaos, you can still come under his shield. Say, Jesus, I wandered away, but I know your shield is strong. You've got the power of God. Your power is made perfect in my weakness. And come to him. So dear friends, I invite you, come under the shield of Jesus. I invite you to pray with me. Oh Lord Jesus, you are a shield around us. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads. We cry aloud to you, Lord Jesus, asking for you to be our shield. 
Jesus, you long to gather us under your wings like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. You long to gather us in. And so, Lord Jesus, during this coronavirus quarantine, when we're feeling all kinds of emotions, some good, some not so good, some that lift up our souls, some that disrupt our souls. Lord Jesus, there's a lot going on inside of us. And so we bring that to you because Jesus, you said when we are in you, there is peace. So we come under your wings. We hide behind your shield because we believe that behind your shield is the safest place we could be. And so we confess to you, Jesus, that there are times that we've tried to be our own shield, do it on our own, and that, have let, that has left us lacking, hurting. And so, Jesus, we confess to you that we've done it our own way, and it hasn't gone very well. And so that, that's why we come to you now, putting our trust in you, coming behind your shield, coming under your wings, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you'd fill us with your peace. We turn to you because you alone are the source of peace. We read in the Bible, you are the Prince of Peace. And so we ask that you would rule our hearts and minds with your peace. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.
Dear Church, the shield of Jesus is the safest place to be. And remember, you have friends, you have family, they're feeling the emotional chaos also. You have the privilege of introducing them to the shield of Jesus. And so when you go out and do that, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit who is at work in you. Amen and amen. I am the Lord your God. I go before you now. I stand beside you. And I'm all around you. Though you feel I'm far away, I'm closer than your breath. And I am Come to me, come to me, cause I'm all